Hi everyone, um, this feels a bit weird doing a live. I actually practiced and made a couple of videos but I couldn't upload them probably because I was talking so much shit. Um, anyway, listen, I just wanted to come on. <clears throat> I don't really like putting myself out there. I don't like to send my own voice and whatever. But yesterday was a big news day for Northern Ireland. So the government finally published their evidence bank, which I have here. And I also got information back that I think, you know, I needed to do a live or a video just to share it with you all. So, in the background, I've always been questioning, obviously, the control measures. Um, people that know me know me, I'm a health and safety professional. I'm very much qualified. I spent a lot of time studying to get where I'm at. Um, risk management has always been something that, that interests me. So, I made a complaint against Peter Weir and the Education Authority. I spoke about it in Stormont on the 26th of um, September. Um, it's available. If anyone would like me to uh, send it to you, please send me your email address. So anyway, in the background, I've been doing a lot of reporting, complaints and whatever. The Health and Safety Executive for Northern Ireland issued me notice that they have accepted my complaint against Peter Weir and the Education Authority and that they will um, investigate. Now, Article 30 of the Health and Safety at Work NI Order 1978 states that they do not have to um, give me the results of that, but I will get them. So, freedom of information requests sent out, you know, complaints sent out, more or less all around masking kids in schools. So, my daughters, 21 and 9, doesn't involve them, but it does involve some of my nephews. I've always, 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 something wasn't right when they started this masking children. I just knew it wasn't right. So I sent the Freedom of Information request on the 14th of August to the Education Authority. I asked them to provide, not just me, but the public, with a documented risk assessment relating to the wearing of face coverings in post primary education settings. Now, I have been vocal on various Facebook groups. I have been helping a lot of different parents on a lot of different scales, more or less around these control measures of hand sanitizer and masks. So, this is what the Department of Education has to say. Dear Miss Higgins, Freedom of Information Act 2000, I refer to your request under the above legislation received on the 14th of August requesting the following information. The documented risk assessment relating to the wearing of face coverings in post-primary education settings. I wish to advise you that following a search of our records, I have established that the information you requested is not held by this department. There you have it. There is no risk assessment done for masking children in schools. The Education Authority do not have it. Please stop getting your children masked in schools. I can give you a copy of this, speak to the school principals, you know, I wouldn't be putting it on <clears throat> anyone without a risk assessment. So basically what this is telling me is if the Education Authority hasn't done one, but they have mandated the use of masks in their school, they're in breach of their duties under the Health and Safety at Work NI Order 1978. They know it, I know it, and now you know it. So there you have it. No risk assessment for masking kids in schools. But sure, we'll just force it on them anyway. Now, there was various other Freedom of Information requests sent out, in particular one to Robin Swan. I haven't had an answer to his yet, um, but I did see on Belfast Live that he was talking about, you know, the time for debate and what have you. So here you go, Mr Swan. If you're up for a debate, I can get you a debate. I can get you a debate with um, an accountant, another lady, myself, you know, mental health support workers. Let's have a debate. Let's have you all around a table and we'll have a debate. In fact, I think we should have had a debate at the start of all this. But anyway, that's only my thoughts. So the other big news. Evidence Bank. This is what our AMI executive has been using to control every single aspect of our life. Before I go on here, folks, I'm not a COVID denier. I know that there's a virus out there. But what I would like to know is, how is it so deadly? What exactly sets this out that makes it so deadly? Why have you not told us what makes it so deadly? Why has no one confirmed that it's definitely 100% animal to human transmission? 
why has the government not debunked these theories coming across that it was made in a lab? You know, why are they not telling us this information? Because they're simply breaching their pledge of office. They are not serving the public on a whole. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. If I breach, say, a confidentiality policy or a health and safety policy in work, it's a disciplinary procedure and I'd be called forward, do the disciplinary and possibly sacked. So why is there no one investigating the NI executive for the breaches of their pledge of office? Beyond me. Anyway, this evidence bank is a joke. Now that's my personal views, my health research views, I'm a health and safety professional. Basically, this is their risk assessment without calling it a risk assessment. So they put in non-pharmaceutical options. So these are their control measures to control the spread of this virus. Stay at home order is their very first intervention that they've noted here. I mean, you know, intervention, control, hazard, risk. It's all in the health and safety. They need a risk assessment, but they haven't done it. So I just wanted to share with you guys, obviously, the response from the Education Authority that they don't have the risk assessment. So they don't have it. Stop your kids wearing masks. Go do something about it. I can't do it for you. I would love to, but I just can't. A couple of strange things in this evidence bank that really strike me. In their control measures, so I'm going to use health and safety talk because that's what I'm trained to do. They call it implementation issues. I call them control measure issues. So they say here, substantial support, financial, social, informational, emotional, needed for people with limited support networks. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. All I see and hear is financial support, financial support, financial support. Where is the other support packages? Where's the mental health support package? Where's the social support package? There is none. There's never any money for mental health. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when this is all over? There won't even be a penny for anything left. Because they've spent so much on track and trace that they've now come out and said, sorry, we can't provide kids with meals over the holiday periods. Like, get a grip. Some parents cannot afford to feed their kids. Where's the support package there? Oh, there is none. Because your local communities will pull together and donate to a food bank that these people then have to go and access. So you've just washed your hands off them. Once again, breaching your pledge of office. Another thing here that they state, note that allowing people outside the home for exercise was very important for mental health in the previous lockdown and not doing so would be hard to justify as the public are now aware that this is a low risk. You bet your bottom dollar the public are aware. The public are more than aware. Trust me, I'm not the only one. I've just decided that I've had enough and I will make a video and I won't stop making videos until people hear and go and research for themselves. As I say, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't run about with a tinfoil hat on. I have my own core beliefs. If things don't make sense to me, I find and go and research until it does make sense. This is my recommendation to you guys. Download this evidence bank. Go through it. You will see what I can see. Trust me. I'm just going to go on down here to a couple more pages. So, <clears throat> page 9. Closure of bars, pubs, cafes and restaurants. Now they do put it down here as a moderate impact. But they then go on to state that loud talking can generate more aerosols. Loud talking. Loud talking. Then they go on to say that the CDC, so they're referring to the CDC here. And if we have to start referring back to the CDC, then <laughs> now really is the time for debate in a, in a executive. Now really is the time for debate. So the CDC report suggests those who test positive twice as likely to have eaten at a restaurant. Would you mind telling the NI public what on God's name you were thinking of with the eat out to help out if you're including this in your evidence bank? The people who test positive are twice as likely to have eaten at a restaurant. What were you doing? Was the numbers dropping too quickly? Did you need them to raise again? What exactly was the method behind that madness? You got people's hopes up. You got businesses jumping through hoops. You got people digging into their capital, their business capital, money that is supposed to be there for their retirement, to jump over hoops and do everything you said to a T to prevent transmission. 
Then you flooded their restaurants with your eat out the help scheme. Then you closed them down again. Very interesting fact that you put in the CD report suggests. So, there you go people. Go away and research what the CDC are saying. Another wee thing that they said here as a, as a benefit. Now listen to this. Small benefits through reduced alcohol and drug misuse and reduced calorie intake. So, reduced calorie intake. That's one of the benefits of closing down the livelihoods or a hospitality industry. Places where people go to get their heads short. Places where people go to have a quick cup of coffee and get out of the house. Are you happy with yourself, Anna Executive? You would need to be. Another wee thing that caught my attention here, folks. Closure of indoor gyms, leisure centres and fitnesses. Everybody on my Facebook knows I go to the gym. My family know why I go to the gym. I don't go to the gym to lose weight. I go to the gym to support my mental health. I need routine, like many others. I need routine. I need to train to release those feel-good hormones. I am sick to death of going to a doctor and them either increasing my medication or telling me to exercise more. Now, anybody that lives in Lagmore or Mount Eagles will know that throughout this whole lockdown at the very start, no one exercised more than me. I was up and down that road three, four times a day. Strangers, people I don't even know, are now stopping me at the local shop and saying, how many meals have you done the day, kid? You know, this is what I had to do. I need the gym, like other people. But anyway, here is their... <laughs> you're never going to believe this. Closure of indoor gyms, leisure centres, fitness, right? Low to moderate impact. And this is their exact words. <sighs> Potential reduction in RT of up to 0.1. Though precise estimation, very difficult. Some evidence from outbreak data, e.g. in Korea associated with a fitness class. They are taking some evidence from outbreak data in Korea associated with a fitness class. Now, I've never been to Korea, but I have been inside my gym. I have seen other gyms and the control measures and all the different things that they've done to make it safe and to stop transmission of this virus. I would say that Korea wouldn't really have what we have. And I'm seriously wondering why our NA executive are even putting this in here. What has Korea got to do with Northern Ireland? Absolutely shocking. They also go on here to state that there's a support package to be required. Blah, 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 blah. As many gym and leisure centre employees are legally self-employed. Let's get on to how long it took them. How long it took them to get a, a self-employed package in place. Not only how long did it take them, certain self-employed people didn't fall into the categories. They didn't qualify. Where was your support package for them? Where is your support package for them? You don't have one. Okay, so brings me on to another interesting wee thing. Closure of non-essential retail. So their impact on COVID transmission, they have stated that by closing non-essential retail, it's a very low impact, right? They then go on to state some limited evidence of transmission from China. Korea, China, Northern Ireland. I'll leave that with you guys. Then they put in here, face coverings are likely to mitigate well. They seem to know a hell of a lot about these face coverings. So why haven't they shared it with the public? Where's your risk assessment? Where's your risk benefit analysis? The Department of Education have told me in writing, they don't have a risk assessment for masking children in schools. So what makes you think that our government has a risk assessment or a risk benefit analysis to support it being used anywhere else? The main blows. Anyway, I don't want to keep everybody too long, but there's another couple of wee things in this that I really think you need to know. Requirement for use of face coverings outdoors. Here we go. Okay. Impact. Very low impact. Again, impact only through very low impact. Low impact again. But here is what they state. Credibility, trust and guidance will be an issue. Yes, it will be an issue. It will be an issue because when you start giving out Mickey Mouse Clubhouse regulations, from the very start, the inconsistencies, you know, the lack of support, and you want people to trust in your guidance. I mean, you, you got to be having a laugh here. That's like me saying to my friend, come on, I'll dye your hair and cut it. Sure, I watch the YouTube video on how to do that. And me being trained in health and safety. 
Come on, people. What is going on here? So, wearing face masks, face masks outside of the house could complement existing government messaging of social responsibility. Okay. Now, what I would like to know. The government's original guidelines stated to wear a mask indoors where socially distancing wasn't possible. Okay, I get that. Fair enough. They didn't tell people you don't need to walk about in the park. You didn't need to tell, they didn't tell people that you needed to wear them at the beach. So why the hell am I going outside my home and just, it's like a zombie apocalypse. People walking about, walking their dogs, walking in fresh air. You know, surely, please, if people are asking you to, to put this on your face, to cover your two breathing methods, why are you not looking into this? Why are you not questioning this? These things are dangerous. They are dangerous with improper use. Oh my God. Very interesting thing here. And I'm, I'm going to say, if I start using bad language, I'm very, very sorry. But this, this really cracks me right up here. Extend requirement for use of face coverings indoors. So this is the crack with the rat here. Impact on COVID transmission. No evidence of effectiveness in children. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I done all that and reported all that and stated all that. Even the World Health Organization state that there is absolutely no evidence of the effectiveness of masking children in schools. In fact, there's no evidence. If you look at the World Health Organization's document, there is no evidence to suggest that children are even transmitters. But I shit you not, what I'm about to read you out, I mean, let, I'm just going to put it out here. If they try, if they try to do this, they're inviting more. They are inviting war. I am not threatening anybody with war. If they try to do this, they are inviting it. I will be a part of it. I won't stand for it. Simple as that. Non-COVID impact, right? For face coverings indoors. There is evidence of anger between members of the community relating to face covering use slash non-use that may be, ex I can't say that word, if rationale is not accepted. Probable harms if implemented in primary schools. If they fucking, God forgive me, if they try to mask children in primary schools, what I'm getting from this is, are they letting us know on the sly that they're thinking about this? Well, see if that's what you're thinking. I would seriously think again. Your Department for Education has just come out and said that you've no risk assessment around these control measures, but yet you're stating in here probable harms if implemented in primary schools. Even, no, for a laugh, try it. Definitely try it. You will not be masking my chin. Let me tell you that. Until you come out and tell us, the public, what the risk-benefit analysis of these, ma these masks are. People need to be fully informed. Not dictated to. Not told. Not given words like mandatory and must. People need to be informed. If you want compliance and you want trust, you need to give people what they really need. They need all forms of information. Yes, there are people out there happy to be told what to do. And blah, 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 blah. I'm not. I'm really not. I didn't study hard and study to get where I am for years to be told to cover my nose and mouth with a mask. I also didn't go through everything I went through in my life to be abused by people in masks. Like your doll in the Disney store. And because I couldn't hear her, she decided to breach the two metre rule and come right up in my face when all I was saying was, no thank you. No thank you. No, I won't tell you that I'm exempt. No, I don't have to tell you that I have a disability. You're a shop assistant. I'm a consumer. Everybody has a right to privacy. Now, if I could just get that doll, only to be told you won't be served without a mask until you tell me you're exempt. Now, anybody that knows me personally, I don't normally back down from an argument this quick, but I swear to God, I was near crying because I'm absolutely sick of it. People that go out there with masks on, nobody's abusing you. Why are you abusing people that choose not to? People should have a choice. It doesn't matter if we're at the end of the fucking world. People should always have a choice. Personal choice. Personal beliefs. You know, what is this? If this piece of paper here, in writing, from the Education Authority for Northern Ireland, telling me and telling you, I wish to advise you that following a search of our records, I have established that the information you requested is not held by this department. If they don't have a risk assessment for the masks... Nobody else will. Another
a wee thing on just hearing, uh, just listening to Belfast Live again this morning, your man, Rob, or Peter Weir, is now being very vocal. I just wonder why all of a sudden, you're calling those tinfoil hot wires and COVID conspiracies and this, that and the other. Oh, now, is it because people are starting to rise up that you are now speaking out yourselves about it? I would like to know that. I would really like to know that. And the ten, you're right, the time for debate is now. So let's have it. Let's have a debate. I would like to invite the NI executive, whoever they choose from SAGE or the World Health Organization, even if Boris Johnson wants to come, bring it on. This will be a debate. The debate will be televised. It will give members of the public opportunities to put their questions forward. Because every time I watch a ministerial update, you have to be a journalist or you have to be someone to be able to ask a question. Well, I am someone. I'm Charlene. I'm a mother. I'm a health and safety professional and I, like many others, are calling out your bullshit. So let's have it. Thanks, folks.